UCLA basketball raids USC for talent while John Wooden rolls in his grave. Eric Musselman arrives and observes the dystopian wreckage over at the Galen Center. And a fan who caught a home run ball now wants the Dodgers to finance the rest of her life. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So, it is April 5th, 2024. By the time you see this clip, I'll be on a plane bound for St. Loser Misery for work. Miserable for every mile. But until then, we are going to be happy by talking LA sports. And if you like being in the know about LA, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Totally love hearing from you guys. Try to answer every one of you guys. Before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Clippers edge Denver 102 to 100. And they did so without Kawhi Leonard. He didn't play because of a sore right knee. Paul George scored 28 points. Meanwhile, Akil Thomas scored his first goal in the NHL. And the Kings edge San Jose 2 to 1. In the last 48 hours, the Kings might have assured their playoff spot. They went from a three-point advantage over the first team below the playoff line. Now it's seven. Meanwhile, today, the Dodgers are in Chicago to play the Cubs at 11. Bobby Miller is 1-0 with no ERA. He's going to face Kyle Hendricks, who is 0-1 with an ERA of 12.27. And Utah's in town to play the Clippers at 7.30. But let's get to the news. Recently, I was wondering aloud if cooler heads had prevailed over at UCLA basketball. You know, that, that maybe this talk of just rampaging through the transfer portal to rebuild a basketball team on the fly might have been a bit overblown. You know, I mean, it, even Mick Cronin said it takes two years for players to figure out how he wants the team to play defense. Just be patient. I'm not above admitting when I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm not that guy. Uh, the reason that I bring that up is because the Bruins have made at least four moves this week related to the portal. Two players out, two players in. Now, two such moves were made yesterday. We mentioned the second player to arrive yesterday because I had cut a special report on USC basketball. We'll talk more about the Trojans in just a moment. Forward Kobe Johnson is transferring from the Trojans to UCLA. Now look, my gut feeling is Johnson's going to be a starter. The Bruins lacked a 3 and D guy last year in their lineup. He hits about a third of his three-point attempts. He averaged almost 11 points a game. But from USC to UCLA. As a side note, it's not that USC fans should be miffed about Johnson leaving. Who ought to be mad as hell are the USC, or I should say the UCLA supporters who have funded Bruins basketball handsomely, specifically to ensure that they would be way better than USC. And yet now you're rummaging through the USC roster for players. Okay. Now, by the way, the second player out of the Bruins program is shooting guard Will McClendon. He only started four games last year for UCLA. He only averaged four points a game for UCLA. It's not much of a stretch, though. When you take a step back and you look at who's been added to the roster, it is not much of a stretch to say that the Bruins lineup right now is already better than anything they had last year. Because not only did they add Johnson at the wing, they have transferred in Sky with multiple Ys at the end of his name, Sky Clark who led Louisville in scoring last year. So there's some more scoring punch added to the Bruins. You would presume a little bit more. And Johnson, you give him a little bit more defense. Meanwhile, a uh, second, a USC basketball recruit. At first, a, a second recruit to decide not to go to USC, at least for now. The first one, though, who is asked to be released from his letter of commitment. Now, to be clear, his asking to be released from his letter of commitment came prior to the hiring of new coach Eric Musselman yesterday. But Liam Campbell is a four-star shooting guard from Indiana. 
He said he will keep the Trojans as an option. He is the second recruit to opt out of USC since Andy Enfield officially left the program on Monday to go coach SMU. Two recruits, as many as eight players on the team, possibly Gonzo. Wow. Now, by the way, if you're wondering, we sent a special news report yesterday afternoon detailing as much as we had on incoming coach Eric Musselman. But I want to take a moment with all of these players potentially leaving SC and address something that a lot of the reporters have been talking about regarding Musselman. That, oh, you know, he's got this reputation. He's going he's gonna to hit the transfer portal really hard and just rebuild the team on the fly. And I'm trying to tell you that the, the uh, scribes are really trying to get you to drink a lot of hopium. We deal with reality here on Faithful Angelino Sports. Here's why you shouldn't buy that hype. The Athletic ranked all of the players who decided to go into the transfer portal. Kobe Johnson of USC was 10th. And Kobe Johnson was maybe the fourth most popular player on the team. That was like way below 500. So you're not exactly gonna get a bunch of killers from one through nine. Even if Musselman went and did a clean sweep of the nine alleged better players in the transfer portal. Now don't get me wrong. I still believe in the long term, this is gonna be a home run hire for the Trojans. Eric Musselman was terrific at Arkansas. But you're asking him in the span of a couple of months to find an entirely new starting lineup and a second team. That is a big ask. There is a discrepancy as to uh, what the fan got, the one who caught Shohei Otani's first home run ball as a Dodger. And often when somebody makes their first home run or hits a landmark home run of some sort, the, the, the fan who catches the ball, they, the player wants it back. So, you know, they trade it and they get some stuff back. So this lady got uh, apparently a couple of bats, uh, some autographs, some caps. <clears throat> maybe she met the player, maybe she didn't. She says she got squat. The Dodgers said no, she got a whole bunch of things. I don't give a damn. I seriously don't care. This whole idea of what did the fan get, like it's a lottery ticket fluttering through the air that she just happened to get. Because these fans now are treating it as if it is their lifeline out of a, a craptacular life. And I almost said something worse, you got it. Look, when I was a kid, my dad took me to Dodger Stadium. I mean, we're talking decades ago, obviously, to see LA play the Pirates. Now the Dodgers got their asses kicked that night and dad wanted to go home early. He worked, I was a kid, I didn't. His career, his car, his house, his rules. I was sad, but I wasn't gonna be risking a spanking. So we go home. I watched the recap of the game on local news. Davey Lopes, my favorite all-time player, hit a home run. Not only did he hit a home run, he hit the home run where the guys who sat next to me shuffled over into my seat and fought for the baseball. In other words, that was my chance to catch a home run ball for my favorite player. Do you think I would have auctioned that off? Absolutely not. I would have kept that ball for the rest of my life. So the idea of catching a home run and saying to yourself, wow, I have the rest of my life in the palm of my hands. I'm gonna have generational wealth thanks to Shohei Otani wanting a baseball. Get the bleep out of here with that. Take your bat, take your cap, take your autograph. It's a baseball, it's not Bitcoin. Lighten up. ESPN wrote this article, five teams who could take down the Braves, comma, Dodgers. First of all, the story's inaccurate because one thing Jeff Pazan failed to mention is each other. 
The Dodgers could take out the Braves. The Braves could take out the Dodgers. So theoret that's theoretically possible because only one team from the NL gets to go to the World Series. But of the five teams that Passan listed who could take out the Braves or Dodgers, he only mentioned one other National League team, Philly. So if you want to know why, he cited the Phil's loaded lineup, two dominant starters, and a bullpen that must be better now. After all, Craig Kimbrell's no longer part of it. And on behalf of LA, I'm here to tell you, we know that feeling. Yes, absolutely. Jason Hayward was placed on the 10-day injured list retroactive to Saturday. He has lower back stiffness and MRI was negative. The Dodgers, meanwhile, they claimed Taylor Trammell off waivers from Seattle to fill the void. And reliever Nabil Krismat was not claimed on waivers, so the Dodgers had sent him over to Oklahoma City. We talked UCLA hoops. What about Bruins football? Colin Schlee has decided to enter the transfer portal, which should make Deshaun Foster's decision for starting quarterback oh so much easier, right? It wasn't, oh, no, 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 we're going to have a competition. It's not Ethan Garbers. It doesn't have to be Ethan Garbers. We're not just going to lock in. Yeah, coach, you really should have locked in. Colin Schlee was not going to take out Ethan Garbers. It was not going to happen. Look, Schlee spent a year with the Bruins. He basically wound up being a change of pace guy. In other words, if it was the type of down where you wanted to give the defense this idea that maybe the quarterback was going to keep and run for a first down, he was the scrambling quarterback. Schley was more traditional. But he, according to Kelly last year, was starting caliber. Hence this whole concept now of an alleged competition, which totally didn't exist. Your starting quarterback at UCLA is Ethan Garbers. So we can stop that. Meanwhile, Bruins offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy was asked about his one season with the Washington Commanders, and then he was also asked what may have kept him from landing a head coaching gig in the NFL. Quote, what I'm going to say is this, I'm here coaching at UCLA. All that other stuff, you can go talk to the Commanders. I'll just leave it like that. Unquote. Correct answer. If he says anything else, because the scribes for years have been pushing Eric Bieniemy as a head coaching candidate in the NFL. And the, and the assumption from a lot of these scribes was he didn't get the gig because of the color of his skin. I am not going to answer race questions. I'm not bright enough to tell you about race. But if he said anything about race, it damages his career. If he says anything about, oh yeah, racism had kept me from getting a job, he probably loses a shot at getting an NFL gig. He probably even loses a shot at getting a head coaching gig in college. He said the right thing. He kept his mouth shut and kept it professional. That's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a nice world. Sometimes you got to bite the bullet and say things you don't really mean. Or you just don't shut up at all. I have to do it all the time. Now, meanwhile, as for the offense that the enemy is putting in, the LA Times asked him questions, but the answers the enemy gave, gave were just as vague. We can tell you, though, of one wrinkle that the Bruins will have on offense next year. They're going to use a fullback now. And that's the first time that a fullback has been utilized in UCLA's offense since before Chip Kelly was hired. I am not sure if two months is enough of a sample size. Maybe it is. But there is a growing belief that the Lakers' recent form has a lot to do with Rui Hachimura in the lineup. Since he became a starter uh, in February, he sank 59% of his shots, including 45% from three-point range. Darvin Ham said there were reasons, though, that it took time for the Lakers to finally entrust Hachimura with starters' minutes. Quote, it's kind of like when that guy doesn't have the ball, it's like, whew, I can relax. It's not like that. It takes all five to get a stop. Just him doing the little things, sprinting back in transition, guarding a guy. Once he's done guarding a guy, his activity and alertness and awareness on the weak side of the defense, unquote. Translation, Hachimura wasn't, was only giving his all 
on the offensive side of the, uh, the court. Michael Cooper was elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame according to his teammates' congratulatory posts on social media. If, in fact, this is true, and I have no reason to doubt it, he becomes the 31st Laker to go to the Hall of Fame. And from the famed Showtime era, Coop goes in, along with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Coach Pat Riley, and executive Jerry West. Now, this news will not necessarily provide immediate help to the Galaxy's backline in time for El Trafico over at LAFC this weekend. But center backs Jalen Neal and Martin Caceres have returned to training. Now, Neal, he hasn't played at all this season due to abdominal issues. So it's very doubtful he's playing this weekend. It's not even a thought on the Galaxy's radar. As for Caceres, he dinged the knee last week. He got an MRI. It did not show significant damage to the knee. Therefore, he is questionable for Saturday's game. But let me know what you think in the comments thread. What is your take now on UCLA using the transfer portal as much as it is? How long do you think it will take for Eric Musselman to make an impact with USC basketball? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are talking LA sports here every single day. And thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.